six for every 1,000 live births down to 28 for every 1,000 live births. In 2011, and is projected to reach 21 by the end of this year. As a country, we have made strides in the prevention and management of major communicable diseases such as HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. Malaria incidence, malaria incidence has, for example, been reduced from 13 and a half cases per 1,000 population in 2006 to 0 0.11, less than one cases per 1,000 population during this year. While deaths have declined from 42 to five in the same period. We are thus very close to eliminating out our target of reaching our target. We are thus very close of reaching our target of eliminating malaria by 2018. The TB notification rate has also been reduced from 511 per 100,000 population in 2006 to 337 per 100,000 in 2013. One must nonetheless emphasize that TB still remains a major health concern. Non-communicable diseases are on the increase and account for about two-thirds of all global deaths. These include hypertension, diabetes, injuries, mental health, and cancers. Risk factors that contribute, risk factors that contribute to these diseases include physical inactivity, Physical inactivity. <laughs> Excessive intake of alcohol. Excessive intake of alcohol. <laughs> Tobacco smoking. <laughs> Tobacco smoking. <laughs> and poor eating habits and poor eating habits. I therefore appeal to all Batswana to reduce their risk by embracing healthy lifestyles. A time will come, a time will come when these self-inflicted ailments or people suffering from these self-inflicted ailments will have to contribute to their own medical fees. <laughs> as of September 2015, as of September 2015, the alcohol levy has raised 1 billion 867 million 586,562 pula. 1,867,586,562 pula raised by the alcohol levy. A 2012 evaluation of the impact of our alcohol reduction campaign interventions indicated that there was a reduction in alcohol consumption from eight liters to per capita to seven liters. No, nothing much. <laughs> HIV and AIDS. Madam Speaker, the midterm review of the Botswana National Strategic Framework has once more underscored the fact that behavior change remains the key to stopping the spread of new HIV infections. As a strategy to help achieve this, community acting together to control HIV or catch has been developed to galvanize community support in reaching the zero infection goal. Currently, 
more than 90% of HIV positive persons that are eligible for antiretroviral therapy are on treatment. In line with the 2013 World Health Organization guidelines, in April 2015, we extended lifelong ARV treatment to all HIV positive pregnant women, regardless of their CD4 count. We are at an opportune time for achieving HIV AIDS epidemic control by as early as 2020. Take into consideration international best practice. Discussions are ongoing on how to best achieve epidemic control in a sustainable manner. The test and treat concept implies that every person who tests for HIV shall be put on treatment irrespective of their CD4 count. In a In addition to providing viral suppression, this form of treatment will also reduce HIV transmissions. At this juncture, I would like to appeal to our partners for their continued support as we move forward. In a further effort to achieve zero new HIV infections, discrimination and AIDS related deaths by 2016, Botswana became one of the three countries confirmed by the Guinness World Record in 2015 as having recently set the new record of the most people having tested for HIV in multi-venues in only eight hours. This is a positive move towards it, having 90% of all Botswana residents knowing their HIV status. With our current HIV testing prevalence of 63%, there, still, there is still a lot more to be done. Here, let me once more note that while we are firm in our commitment to providing for HIV AIDS testing and therapy, the ultimate answer to stopping the spread of this terrible virus lies in us exercising self-discipline in our behavior. <laughs> Turning to our youth, Madam Speaker, government has intensified support for youth businesses by putting in place reservations as part of affirmative action to improve their market participation by setting aside a certain percentage of tenders issued by government to youth companies. These exemptions have been communicated to all stakeholders to ensure smooth implementation. Youth empowerment is being further enhanced through capacity building in entrepreneurial skills and the funding of youth businesses. Government remains steadfast in its commitment to promote positive mindsets and attitudes amongst young people, to empower them to be responsible and self-reliant individuals with sound morals. We are thus collaborating with youth service organizations to help us further develop and deliver comprehensive character building programs targeting young people. Restructuring of the Botswana National Youth Council, the BNYC, is complete and a new BNYC board has been appointed. Madam Speaker, following its introduction in April 2014, the Botswana National Service Program has been doing well with an average monthly enrollment of 13,500. Enrollment in the National Internship Program reached 6,196 as of July 2015, which was slightly above the target of 6,000. Out of these, 2,910 are working in the public sector, 1,123 are with parastatals, 1,855 are with the private sector, and 308 with NGOs. Art and culture programs continue to grow in popularity. This year, a total of 14,125 performing artists and 337 visual artists were registered to participate in the President's Day celebration events. In, in the 2014 financial year, artworks and crafts valued at 1,796,000 were sold by artists compared to 980,000 for the previous year. An action plan commenced in February 2015 to promote further stakeholder engagement in the production and marketing of arts and crafts. Various national events such as the Kawa Dune Challenge and Makhadi Khadi Epic are in this context used as a platform to market Botswana Arts and Crafts International. Market days for arts and crafts have also been introduced in every district of the country. Under Library and Information Services, Madam Speaker, our public libraries continue to perform from conventional book collections to information centers through ICT. 
As a result, their operational hours have been extended to cater for the popularity of their expanded services, which include ICT training as well as free internet access. The provision of free ICT services in libraries contributes towards bridging the technological divide in local communities. To date, 64 public libraries provide free access to internet and 63,744 members of the public have been trained on basic ICT to enable them to participate in the cyberspace to improve their lives. Through the assistance of the Robert and Sarah Rothschild Family Foundation, the 13th library is under construction in Verda and should be operational before the end of this financial year. Turning to sports, Madam Speaker, Botswana's performance in sport is improving every year, with our athletes in various sport codes excelling at continental and world-level competitions. In this respect, we continue to be inspired by the achievements of our internationally competitive athletes. Altogether, since April this year, Botswana athletes have won 141 medals, that is 49 gold, 44 silver, and 48 bronze. in international competitions, including two world champions at the Commonwealth Youth Games and three African champions, Nigel Amos, Isaac Makwala, and Cabello Kosiemang. The success of local athletes has attracted worldwide attention while instilling national pride, national pride and unity. With the completion of the 26,000 Sita Francestown Stadium, we now have another venue capable of hosting major events. It will host the fourth edition of the Botswana Games in December this year, where over 3,000 of our young athletes from all over the country will compete. Turning now to international relations, Madam Speaker, Botswana continues to play an active and influential role in shaping the global agenda, in line with our national priorities and international norms. In today's globalized world, where economies are increasingly intertwined, Botswana needs to work closely with the international community to ensure our survival and prosperity as a nation. We thus continue to add our voice and support within our modest means where necessary to the endeavors of all peace-loving nations in defense and promotion of fundamental values of democracy, good governance, human rights, the rule of law, sustainable development, and international peace and security. Madam Speaker, among the various multilateral organizations we belong to, the Southern African Development Community is of particular significance as our own well-being is ultimately intertwined with that of our neighbors. In August 2015, I began my one-year term as the SADC chairperson. My focus as SADC chair is to give meaning to our commitments to industrialization and regional integration with a view to achieve sustainable development. In this respect, I will be guided by the revised Regional Ind Indicative Strategic Plan 2015-2020, which was approved at the SADC Extraordinary Summit held in Harare on the 29th of April this year. Here it may be noted that notwithstanding some challenges in about three countries in the region, the political climate in most countries in our region is stable. We shall also continue to monitor developments in other parts of our continent and make our modest contribution where we can. This is informed by our strongly held belief that for Africa to achieve economic development, it needs peace and security as well as the consolidation of good governance. Botswana will continue to play her part as a compassionate member of the international community. Accordingly, we will continue to contribute to various appeals for assistance for victims of natural disasters and participate in global efforts, such as ongoing efforts, as we did in recent times with the spread of the Ebola virus. Continuing incidents of terrorism on the African continent and elsewhere are also a source of deep concern for us. Botswana further remains fully committed to the International Criminal Court and the International Criminal Justice System. 
We will continue to support the ICC and cooperate with all its operations. The drafting of legislation for the domestication of the REM statutes is an advanced stage and should soon be brought before this parliament. Let me take this opportunity to once more express my profound gratitude and appreciation to all governments, international organizations, and individuals for the valuable support and development assistance they continue to generously extend to our country. Yes. Madam Speaker, before I conclude, or as I conclude, let me again, once again, pay tribute to those institutions and individuals throughout our country who are devoting their time and resources to assist others. In this respect, I wish to once more pay special tribute to public officers across government who since 2010 have been leading by example through their monthly participation in community service day activities. <laughs> These activities continue to benefit literally thousands of their fellow citizens. Examples of the over 200 projects undertaken this past year alone include the construction and refurbishment of homes and other buildings, the upgrading of recreational areas, donations to deserving organizations, and direct support to families and individuals in need. I also wish to pay special tribute to the Khosizarun, who remain the custodians of our customs and traditions. It is largely through them, the Khosi, it is largely through them that we have maintained the inclusive culture of consultation in our development programs and policy direction. They thus deserve our respect and our gratitude for continuing to play a key role in our democracy. In keeping with this spirit of common purpose, let me here conclude my remarks by renewing my appeal for each and every fellow citizen to be part of our common journey to an even better Botswana. Government interventions will only succeed if they are understood as national projects to be embraced by all Botswana. While government has a responsibility to drive key programs such as the ESP and EDD, poverty eradication and youth empowerment, their objectives in each case is ultimately about empowering citizens in the private and parastatal sectors, along with other non-government stakeholders, to grasp the resulting opportunities for job creation and inclusive economic diversification for sustained development to take this country forward. To reiterate what I said at the beginning of this address, as we prepare to enter our sixth decade, we can either become more productive by working together to reach our goals, or we can allow individual interests and potentially debilitating divisions to rob us of further progress. Our nation can only achieve its full potential by working together. As I've said before, we only have one country. Let us all try to be part of the solution to any problem, rather than to be the problem itself. Finally, let me end by once more calling on the Lord who makes all things possible to bless us along our path of progress. The weather forecasts predict poor rains for this season. I have no doubt that these scientific forecasts are accurate. Therefore, what is it that we can do? To me, and I'm sure to all of you, it's very clear what we should do. We should all turn to God and pray for rain. And we should keep on praying and hope he will answer our prayers. It may not rain today, after we pray, or tomorrow, or even next week. But we should still keep praying nonetheless, even if it does rain. We in this house should set the example by doing so. And therefore, 
With your permission, Madam Speaker, I would like to call upon one of the members of this House, Honourable Minister Bach, to lead us today in prayers for rain before we adjourn. Can we all stand up? Are rappelling Ho Mudimu Rara, Mudimu Morwa, Mudimu Mowa, Boraru Jobi Tepiling, Robile de Toho, Moteng Hapalamente, Yala Hatse, Labotuan, Rilimotapilu, Rerapelela, Le Hatse, Laru, Buswa. Jo uburi neiling kahorata haha. Rekupa butelo butoko jaha raizo. Bona raizo le hati le kuakwaliti. Chaba yaka ko inyori le akona miti. Diti di zote zidi mole hati. Dinyo rilwe, ibile di hasa hasa mi, lela hati. Di tzidi mudimu wami, lidimela, di omeleti. Mudimu waruna, rako rapela. Rini sete pula, ya midupi, pula ya midupi, mudimu wami. Koto hisa, le hati la khaako ko retere bone di jo ha mmogo le metsi a re kaanwa le tsothe tse di tlokang di tsidi tsothe tse di tlokang go tala jo bo ka nna ntemo le hati nja rona mo re go lopa ka leina la ha Jesu Kriste morena wa rona Arotere ring, amen. <laughs>